almost the front one. You should be flaunting that. No. Live stream checklist. Hold on, it may be. Oh, look, it's green. We online? Green's good, right? Do we have audio? Green is good. Mm -hmm. We have audio. All right. Do the, yeah, hand, do the hand thing. We're done do doing the hand, hand thing. thing. <laughs> the hand thing. We're all. <laughs> all right. Now, okay. we're, now we're done with screwing around. Welcome to Vlog Thursday 84. Don't put the D in the V port or it could cost you. So. <laughs> I guess. Why'd you use the word port? Yeah. You killed it. I killed uh, it. It's still a port. <laughs> it's still a port. That's still what the uh, thumbnail is. It, you know, occasionally. Part of the problem with tech support is, and why it's so mind-numbing, is when it's so obvious, like stick the data line into the orange port. That stick, says data. That says data D. with a D, and stick the phone line into the white port that says V, and it should work. We did that and it didn't work. So then you drive all the way out there, and you prove that they actually did not do the thing that you implicitly have labeled, colored, and done everything possible to express <laughs> how you plug this in. And they plug did it in Did you color code the cables? You didn't do everything possible. You're right. The cables needed to be color coded. Who was so. it who did that? They plugged their Netgear router in wrong because Netgear color coded the ports on it. Mm. And they plug the yellow cable from their uh, LAN just... into the WAN port on it because it was yellow, so the yellow cable must go in the yellow port. Hey, at least they tried. <laughs> An attempt was made. Yes, uh, for those of you saying that you've seen it on Imager, this guy posted it on Reddit. That's my Reddit username. Oh, Actually, the Imager's name is Lawrence Systems, in case so you didn't notice. It's <laughs> Just just in case it wasn't clear that the imager link was Lord for Lawrence Systems. <laughs> stupid. This is, oh, that's stupid. Just set it on the table. All right. Kyle's messing with things over here. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, I'm not sure. got a nice little he's distracting us now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. So there has not been, uh, there's not been a lot of videos the last week because we've actually had to work. We had to do real IT work, like lots of it. Some yeah, I mean, busy. I only got to play Conan mm -hmm. for like, Four hours here. I know. That's <laughs> You've actually done the mo or the least amount of work this week, I think. Maybe. I think that may be the case. Uh, but you're also yes one and of no. that have done on-sites, so... It, well, remote work, I just open up a bunch of sessions at once, and since a lot of it's click and wait, I can run through cleanups on three computers while That's flipping easy. back to Conan in windowed mode. <laughs> Marcus actually asked me earlier, he's like, why are you playing window mode? I like to get work done. That's uh, you actually turned me onto windowed mode here because of that. You yeah. were playing uh, was it Ark at the same time you were doing a virus yeah. cleanup. They just move them back and forth. Let me do let me do this onboarding for our managed services. Do this virus on this yeah. window. This virus cleanup on that window. Some on of this the stuff window. that's really just like click it, wait for a scan to go. Yeah. You just leave it open for a half hour and you do something else. Yep. So much of our job is uh, the reason we have multiple monitors is so we can do something else while something mind-numbing is happening on at least one or two of them. It's yeah. usually supposed to be looking things up, but sometimes it's Imgur. Yeah, sometimes. Well, a lot of times we're looking up. We're looking up stuff on Imgur. Yeah. And Reddit. <laughs> I started watching uh, YouTube videos on um, why companies fail. <laughs> Why companies fail? Yeah, they talked about like they uh, they do uh, case studies of companies and part of like why they failed. Like they talked about, I think it was GoPro and how when they went public trading, they had to hire so many people now just to handle like accounting and public relations yeah. and that. That oh, we have all these people now who are an expense, but we're making we're still taking in the same amount. Yeah, there's. And uh, me and Brett, I just posted a video today, and me and Brett kind of talk about some of the business stuff, and we're mm -hmm. gonna do more videos on that. Cause you know, it's, it's really have those- Oh, real, RTSs. <clears throat> yeah, any yep. RTS game is the same as a business. So there, there's a- How there's many a, clicks can you do per minute? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a definite parallel between running a company and being like an RTS game. Cause you got all the resource management, you have uh, just all these little pieces and components. You gotta in. hire- uh, some South Korean StarCraft players. South Korean, oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Just the, <laughs> business managers? Business managers. Yeah. Business managers. <laughs> like, just go pick all your business managers from eSports teams? Yeah. Yeah, so it's the same thing. It's uh, in so much running a business is like that. It's kind of resource allocation. And, for example, uh, 
as we made some changes with Marvin leaving, I'm the one doing all the quotes at the moment because Marvin, that was one of the tasks assigned to him. So now I have to decide how we ought to allocate those resources. How do we make that more efficient? Part of the problem is uh, people keep changing their minds. That's why, and I did an entire thing on how we did the cabling jobs, and it came up really well. We got a, a job, we emailed them the quote. They didn't approve it right away because they actually changed their mind about something and said, can we add two more drops? So we just went in and modified two more drops in there. Oh, his, Hi, Kyle. He's on phone duty. Yeah. <laughs> so, and sometimes you have too, too many villagers, absolutely. So it's uh, all that back and forth of being able to do all of that and uh, get that accurate and change it, but that requires a lot of management time, which is unfortunately sucked up a lot of my time lately and caused a lot yeah. of my video time. But on that same token, what I've been going out and doing is bidding a lot of big jobs that required my presence, and it's because these companies are spending a larger, much larger sum of money with us. So those required a little bit more attention, but we're build half of them, those uh, dealership projects we were working yeah. on. So we got most of those invoiced out. That was a big Cat 6A project. That's one of the reasons we had so much, and we still have even more Cat Four 6A. more rolls. Yeah. We, we went through, um, I don't know, 30,000, 40, no more than that. What? 40,000, 50,000 feet of Cat 6A? I don't know about oh, that. No. They're a thousand a roll. They're a thousand. Oh, okay. Not that much yet. Yeah, because that would be 40 rolls. Yeah, not 40 rolls. Maybe you bought through maybe eight? No, I think we threw 10 rolls so far. Well, that's 10,000. Yeah, so 10,000 feet of Cat 6A so far for these. Um, With four more on the. And there's four more. Yeah. yeah. So there's been a lot of these projects. That's just one component of it. Was, I just think of it because like we had to buy, get so much Cat 6A for the project. But it's, it's a big deal. This is some of the stuff that we have to do. Um, and then the other thing I talked about with Brett is the YouTube. We're expanding steady on that. That's one of the reasons you see the end roll trailer of, hey, hire us on YouTube. Uh, that's going really well. A lot of people have been hiring us for small projects. Uh, we're helping out a um, apartment complex in California install Wi-Fi. Yeah. And they have people on site doing the physical layer. We're doing the planning portion and deployments and sometimes pre-configuring equipment and sending it all out. So, yeah, that's uh, it's been a lot of what's occupied too much of my time. And then this guy's hanging out. He starts here. When do you start? Uh, right after Labor Day on September 4th. September 4th. This is uh, He officially goes from intern to i got to write a check. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a job position change. <laughs> So that's that's happening too. Um, he's going to handle more technical stuff and do some learning. We're, I was thinking about it too because he's starting from ground zero uh, from our processes here. We're going to make some videos with you. All right. About how we do things. You see more of me then. Train, yeah, training videos. Uh, we're going to cover how we do some of the training and how we onboard people, and sure. we're going to retrain at least one of our staff members at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, really good at his job. Not. He, 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 hates did, he didn't have a computer growing up. Yeah. He doesn't like technology that much. He loves installing cable. Yeah. Yes, we're talking about Corey. Corey yeah. might be watching, so yeah. hi, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he shouldn't be watching. He's installing cable as we speak at an yeah. Oscar dealership. He's up on Get a Get back list. to work, Corey. <laughs> you are watching this video, get back to work. Yeah, him and the other Kyle are out there uh, pulling cable, putting stuff in. So we're going to do some uh, training, and it's kind of how we use Invoice Ninja and things like that. I've done tutorials on it, but um, more than anything else, a lot of people ask me, how do you grow a business? How do you hire more people? And it gets, I won't lie, it gets easier as you have more people, but the other side of it, too, is you have to have process and procedures in place. And uh, we've got them semi-documented. Um, there's, we definitely have process procedure. We're going to work on documenting a little bit more, because as you grow the company, the you need more documentation. But that we're a little bit different. When you look at a company like McDonald's, their documentation is you know three sizes of French fries level because of their height. Uh, but Burger King, yeah, you have to watch like a training video for a day. <laughs> like the I got to I was doing some work there and watched the guy watching it, and I'm like, I'm looking at him. And he's like, I, I can't believe I got to do this. I go, I don't know, man. But it's a very important aspect of business, though, is really process and procedure. And as you narrow people down or as you grow the company, um, he's going to end up wearing a lot of hats here because we only have a handful of people here. So you end up with a lot more. But as you get bigger as a company, you end up with 
dedicating people to a certain task so the documentation for how they do their job becomes narrower and narrower and more and more specific to the point where there's three pictures of french fries <laughs> small medium and large it's, it's <laughs> like the uh, hospital in idiocracy yeah oh my god <laughs> <laughs> my head kind of uh, hurts it's yeah. becoming more and more real it's scary yeah, so it's, it, it, yeah, he's getting scared because he's like, will I be able to learn it all? It's nervous. It's nerve-wracking. Uh, it's pretty easy. I can do it, and I'm, yeah. I'm dead from the neck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has a brain injury, and he's doing it. So. Yes. <laughs> and it's, like, documented by a doctor, so. Truth. <clears throat> uh, people are asking why our stream is slow. We don't know. This stream goes out in 1080 to the best of our ability. Comcast is Comcastic. I don't know if it's an upload problem or what's going on, but whatever's going on to reduce the uh, stream, I don't know. Um, yeah, it he's happens. saying it's only in 480. Are we streaming in 720? Nope, we stream in 1080. Really? Uh, I'll be what, back. What happened? What are you downloading, Steam? I shouldn't be, but we do. Steve. Right. Steve is downloading he's... Steam. <laughs> and unfortunately, <laughs> the, because I have traffic shaping for to allocate for our phones, I do not have traffic shaping to stop Steam from doing things. So that's probably why our stream health is a little bit worse than ours. So I'll have to apologize on that. This stream too, we on should the prioritize. We should prioritize. I know. And make a tutorial. See there, we'll make a tutorial. Yep. This will be training for you to do this. We're going to make a tutorial to show him how we, how we do it. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Oh, and Kyle left this phone here. Yeah, Kyle. Where he's at now? Um, I don't really know <laughs> what the bit rate is because it's actually controlled by Google because we. So whatever Google has is a bit rate and sends as an upload. I know I'm sending all the signal out as 1080. No it's actually friends. going through um, OBS Studio over here. Yep. Which, by the way, I did learn, and I haven't done this yet, but OBS Studio supports uh, overlaying the comments on top. So that's actually on my to-do list. It's probably a plugin that uh, we can put yep. on there. Yep. It's a plugin that we can do. Oh, it's a OBS actually is just a feed. You add the feed, and YouTube has a feed uh, file. So that's going to be. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, I'm going to make a tutorial on how to cool. do it now that I know how to do it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I said, we do have QoS turned on for those of you asking, but it, uh, right now there's either something being pulled or downloaded. We have a lot of things going on in our office. We got servers, we got everything else. One of those things could be pulling other amounts of data. This is on that shared data network. It's on a separate network, but maybe I should change that, you know, because I maybe. have the technology. <laughs> just trunk it to its own little thing. Yeah, trunk it so. to its own one and then have give that entire uh, section of data. Did you turn off Steam, Steve? Uh, Kyle's games downloaded last night after we left, and the only download I have is queued for 4 a.m., so I it wasn't nothing. that. Huh. I got nothing going on. Hmm. So there was nothing actively going. Yeah. I don't but know. even, I think it's an internet issue because even. Uh, that's not working either? It says reconnection successful, so it looks like it dropped oh. the session to... So our, our internet's... It happens. <clears throat> our internet's Comcastic. I actually received... <laughs> yeah, I received three bids for faster internet. And this is part of the reason is Vlog Thursday. Maybe we'll do more live streams, but up uploading is obviously kind of a pain because I have to upload all my videos, and that's the big... All these, uh, they're non-symmetrical. So even if we have 60 meg down... Um, the up right now is limited to 10, which doesn't make a lot of sense that 10, 10 is enough to get out a 1080 stream of compressed video, yeah, but it, I don't know. You should only need like five. Yeah. yeah I should only need five, because when you look at like a next Netflix, I can watch a 1080 stream down, it's pretty damn good. So who knows? Maybe there's some magical setting inside of OBS for streaming that I should set differently? I don't really know. So, Why? But they're all the same, it's just today. I, yeah, that's just today. We haven't changed the settings in a while. Anyways, I'll quit babbling about that. I do have a language issue. and uh, Like bad uh, language or other languages? <laughs> people's Compressed. languages. Someone said YouTube's been having trouble with live streams. <laughs> They've seen it with other people. Oh, okay. okay. So that could be too. I know for a little while, YouTube went down for their live system went down because I remember someone was complaining about it. I've seen tweets and people being... Anyways. Um, Sometimes another part of our job that becomes very infuriating, and I don't know what to do about this. Like, where are we? You try to take a system and put it around a problem so you can deal with it easier. But this phrase eludes me. Okay. The internet kicked me out. Oh, yeah. So, okay. What? That's what you mean by It language. kicks me out. What, what do you mean you? it kicks you out? Yeah. This has been like a puzzle for us because I don't know what they mean. And we ask questions like, the browser closed? No. It just kicked me out. Can you go to our site? Yeah, I'm there right now. 
Okay. Yeah. Did it kick you out? No. Oh, then what kicked you out? Mm -hmm. Right. I can't get it. Can you get into your email? Well, yeah, but then it kicks me out. Well, what happens when you get kicked out? Okay, what is this? And it becomes this infuriating circle conversation. And for some people like that, we've actually gone there because it's a, it's a business client nearby. Oh, yeah. Um, we've gone there and asked them, show us what happens. Well, I can't make it do it right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. And it's been, it's, we've been there a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can't get any better word than it kicks me out. Now, and this is not a customer that said this. This is a frequent, ongoing yeah. problem. Yeah. So we're trying to crack it here. Like, what does kick me out mean? Because they've never been able to articulate I, it. I assume <laughs> things close, but... That's probably what it is. When, when did it happen? Or... I don't know. It happens all the time. When? We when? can't even look Like, at some of them we've deciphered. Notice. My cursor jumps around when I'm typing. Yeah, well, you have a laptop. Almost. <laughs> Palm detection. Yeah. Palm detection. Uh, I saw one the other day, but coincidentally, and something happened. Kyle's computer crapped out because his hard drive died. That's a different issue. Um, don't worry, we kind of had backups. He didn't back up his Steam no, library. No, I though. actually didn't have backups because the only thing on that drive was pretty much a Steam library and my downloads. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Which is like, already on a cloud somewhere. So. It's like that. that. I yeah. wasn't concerned about the files on it. Right. But um, one of the problems we've run into, now I understood this guy's kick me out issue was he couldn't connect and it kept giving him a bad password. Oh. Yeah, and uh, oh. it, here's a weird problem. If you have a slow, crappy laptop and you want to RDP into your office, <clears throat> you have to change the bit rate to a lower bit rate for it to connect. Yeah. And right. that's a weird RDP thing that it doesn't give that error. It just brings you back to the password prompt. It actually, yeah, it <clears throat> looks like an invalid password. So we yeah. actually changed this password first before we realized it's like an old Core 2 Duo laptop. Is it? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was awful. And it's on. It was awful. Windows 10. Don't ask questions. I don't. It well, was probably on seven at some point and got the free upgrade. Yeah, pretty much. Upgrade. Yeah. Well, yeah. Everything seven and up might already be on ten just because of that, because people don't know how to cancel that. No, you couldn't you cancel it. You, you could. You just yeah, woke you... up to it. <laughs> you had to yeah. go turn off auto updates. Recommended updates. You had to turn them off. Yep. Yeah. Chris, the guy is not technically savvy. He's one of their outside salespeople. And uh, he has to VPN in. Since we've taken over, we've upped the security a bit for the company. Him VPNing in, big deal, because uh, it's it's a few more clicks, and he's less than thrilled about anything that is a barrier to him getting his job done. This whole security thing is so. Well, that's just like the person who complained about they forgot their phone and couldn't two factor. Is there a way to go around it? No, no it no. defeats the purpose. Looks like an hour drive for me to get my phone. Don't forget your phone. You uh, literally yeah. know you need your phone for this. And they were angry at us, too. Yeah, security is a balance of how angry are they <laughs> and how convenient we care about security. If they want us to tell them it's secure, these are the steps. The other people were like, you're flapping in the breeze. It is up to you what you want to do. We think this is a horrible configuration. Um, we're letting you know when we do this yep. in writing. Um, we'll move on with the day. <laughs> so that's, yeah. That's always that's always a fun aspect of dealing with it. But enough about tech support, because uh, we could probably babble on all day about tech it's support. It's some of the most fun and infuriating part of portions it's of It's a very job. grindy part of our job is doing the tech support. I really like the other part that's more innovative. Um, and it's also been interesting, too, because I've said this a few times, and um, maybe I'll even bring some developer friends on there, but we were just laughing how like no one's developing Windows applications anymore. Yeah. And the reason why is because the most unsatisfying answers come out of my mouth for people who are going, well, why does Outlook randomly crash? Because Outlook's a horrible product. Yeah. Uh, we had a guy today. Outlook decided not to sync his email. We just had to reboot his computer and just start syncing it. There's not an error message. It's just not working. Reboot. Magic works. And he's like, this is very annoying that it does this once in a while. I'm Don't like, use yeah. Outlook. I have to use Outlook. You create your own problem. You've, yeah. They're, they're <laughs> like the Mac people we see who... You know, well, my Mac's 10 years old. You should really replace it. Well, I don't want to spend $2,000 on a Mac. Then, well, then don't no. buy a Mac. <laughs> yeah, but I need a Mac. I have to have a then Mac. Then it's $2,000. This is... That's why for a lot of those like um, desktop programs, if there's a web alternative, we Use usually it. suggest it. Yeah. Um, Gmail is just so much more reliable than relying on Outlook. Yeah, or even if you use the Outlook website, it works substantially better than actual Outlook. Yeah, the Out Somewhat. so I've had no well. real problems with the, the web version of Outlook. I don't personally use it, but I've logged into some customers when Outlook just broke. 
And I go, let's make sure your emails work here. And they did. They go, oh, wait, well, this works. This looks a lot like yeah. Outlook, and it, it just works. It actually yeah. does look. It stays up. It yep. doesn't just have problems syncing your emails sometimes. And I bring some of this up because, so today I was at one of our clients who's doing really, really well. And their entire workflow is not, they don't have any Windows servers in their office. They have Windows desktops. They do not need any central user management because it doesn't matter to them. Yeah. Uh, their entire workflow is a web-based system. Now, they're a graphics and design company. They make signs and everything. Their entire software, all web-based, yeah. all hosted in the cloud. From the approval to the design upload where I can approve my, they're the ones that did the signs in our building. And the entire workflow and everything is all web-enabled. They use nothing but web-enabled email. So anyone who works there just opens the browser and has access to everything. They're using Slack for communication. Yep. They have no central. And this is, I'm looking at these companies and they actually end up needing us less in terms of tech support and things like that. They didn't, we built them a new uh, storage server. So that's- And uh, a new design station. Yeah, and a new design workstation. They do need a high-end workstation for that. But everything else is just all cloud-enabled magic. Yeah. It's mostly the little bit of hardware support they need here and there. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're not a managed services client, and it's hard to sell them on it because they're like, we don't really download files. Everything works. We don't load programs. Yeah. We just have, as long as the browser's working, and we're not, they have a, a pretty focused team. They're pretty, I think they got like 25 people now. I didn't know that. They have a lot of people. Yeah. This place is busy when you go there, man. Yeah. And, uh, and they've grown only in the last few years doing this, but it's the whole thing. It's an entire web-enabled workflow, and we're seeing so many of these newer companies start up going, all right, we're going to start here versus these older ones. Well, we've always used Outlook for the last 19, since 1995 or whenever Outlook came out. So mm -hmm. here they are today. On uh, 92, you looked it up earlier. 92. It's 25 years old. Yeah. And it's still running off that same horrible, you know, 25-year-old <laughs> base. Sorry, right? your PST file is bigger than two gigs. Yeah. Yeah, and we're we're the same way. I mean, we're using Invoice Ninja. We use the wiki for all of our documentation management. Uh, Invoice Ninja is all of our quoting and everything else. The only not web-enabled thing I have is KMI Money for uh, managing our ledger. And I haven't really found, maybe there is out there, like a good web-enabled system for doing it. And I don't don't say QuickBooks because I have no <laughs> I was just about to say QuickBooks has a web version. Yeah, the QuickBooks. Peachtree. They have a web version? Oh, they no. Don't, theirs no. isn't web-enabled either. <laughs> yeah, so... K but don't tell their sales guys yeah. that. They're not super clear on that. They're, yeah, <laughs> p the people are super confusing. It's not really web-enabled. To be fair, because uh, I see somebody saying that a lot of large companies are phasing out Slack, we pretty much use it for basic communications. We actually and use Signal for more important communications, I, right. passwords. There was an such. article the other day, uh, and as much as I hear they're phasing it out, I would not. Uh, Slack is still, it's still growing. Huge. Well, no, Slack is not shrinking, it's growing. The advantage some people are taking, well, the things people are taking advantage of is Microsoft Teams. Microsoft basically said, we're going to copy Slack. And I have seen Teams, I haven't used it directly, but from just looking and seeing its use, not bad. You guys did a great job copying. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and it if we were really a well Microsoft house, are, yeah, yeah in because it's pre-included. If mm -hmm. it's pre-included with like your Microsoft, it is the house of Microsoft. Right. Uh, because it's a tool included with the Microsoft suite of tools. If you're on Office 365, if you're in that platform, absolutely, it's a uh, you. Why would you use Slack? I, I don't have a use case for you. Why would you pay for? Uh, if you wanted all the premium features of Slack, you got to pay for it. Why would you pay for Slack if you already have Teams? Yeah. Teams, comparatively, all the features of Slack comes with your Office account. So I wouldn't really say, I don't know that many companies that are phasing it out because once they're embedded with Slack, I know a handful of them actually, even though Teams is available, they're too much into using Slack that we they don't We got everything change. set up. Well, well the reason he cited was that it wasn't centrally managed, so it was a security issue. Oh. So, Neither is Microsoft one, right. so I know right. very few people. And also, that type of platform is never where you should be putting passwords. No. That's actually, I can't remember the name of the company, but I met with them and I thought they were kind of cool. Um, they have a really neat tool that works as a bot with Slack and Teams. And the bot looks for people who post passwords and things like that and alerts management that things are posted that shouldn't have been posted. It looks for keywords. It looks for people discussing things they shouldn't be discussing on there, like for HIPAA violations and stuff like that. Um, very important. Yeah, very cool. So if it <laughs> yeah. recognizes a credit card or social security number being posted, it deletes the post and makes a note and sends, to, sends the alert for it. So there's some really cool stuff that's coming out for uh, to help manage it. But yeah. Uh, yeah, someone, someone, someone said Microsoft replaced Slack because someone said you're supposed to use it. Like I said, if you're already in the Microsoft world, 
you, why wouldn't you use it? I, I don't really have an argument uh, for why you should use Slack over Teams. I'm sure there's some feature, some plugin that someone says doesn't work yet, hasn't been ported over to Teams, whatever. It maybe gets does, ported over. Does it have the Korea plugin? <laughs> We've wrote our own Korea script. That's all yeah. I'm going to say. <laughs> I can't see this. Um, uh, ideal central management, yeah. That's... Yeah, the central management, that, well, part of it too is if you do use uh, Slack, it is a extra piece to manage versus if Office 365 is included. So if I have a Office 365 user, Kyle, everything from your teams and every, as a matter of fact, completely let's doable. go a step further. If you have Office 365 with ADS integration for your entire domain, for your Active Directory system, files then and everything. files and everything, then one user, I've now centrally managed everything top to bottom. So yeah. yeah, there's, and once again, if you're in that world, hard to beat it. I do know a lot of people use Slack because they're shockingly, if you leave the professional office world or you go to this graphics company, you won't find Office 365 there. Matter of fact, you won't find them using Microsoft Office at all. No. And there's a lot of companies like that. Us. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah. I actually I have Office installed. <clears throat> Why no. do you have Office installed? Uh because. Because people break Outlook and I have yeah. to recover PSTs. That's the only yes. reason you use we it. We have it for a recovery reason. PSTs in it. <laughs> That's 100% of the reason I installed it was to use Outlook to, like, people would break their Outlook or break their PST and need the contacts out of it. So I could load the PST, pull their contacts, and import them over when, we, when they would switch to something else. Yeah. So there's... Yeah, granted, we're using it for testing purposes. I have a VM with it installed. I have an old version because I've had to get people's old PST files. I still have it in. I still yeah. have Outlook 2000. I'm on 07. Okay. I have Outlook 2000 or 2003. The old, one of the old versions because mm -hmm. we yeah. had to do that. I keep it installed on a VM. Just It's just for recovery purposes. So, and I have a, I have the disk somewhere for it, I'm sure. It's in my archive of crap. We had a 2003 come in the other day. It looked oh. like it would have been unopened. It had the keys and everything on it. Yeah. They're like, I just want to get rid of this. I'm just recycling this. Yeah. Like, really? Oh, okay. I, I, just the bigger picture, more and more things as they go to the cloud from a business standpoint make a lot of sense. Um, now, as long as, and there's a few rules for not having a cloud, do you have a massive amount of storage that you need access to? Because you're a design company and you have, I don't know, or, 400 gigs worth of crap, or you're a YouTube content creator who also goes, hey, I have 700 gigs worth of videos uh, just sitting here. Are you a civil engineering company with sewer you know, videos? With 60, two, po two and a half terabytes of sewer videos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and I mean, those things are, I didn't realize, those things are only, I think they're maybe at 720 at best, and they have that much. Yeah, so, you don't think about the miles and miles of that of pipes beneath your feet. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's one of those things. Like you can you can try to judge what needs to go in the cloud, but for the most part, when it comes to a lot of the applications, they're not being developed for the Microsoft. We're seeing more and more cloud-enabled things. But I look at how nice our invoicing right. system works. It's one, it's open source. It's very fluid. It's easy for us to communicate as a tool back and forth for our clients. It handles a lot of the money that goes back. Well, handles all the money that goes back and forth. Um, but smoothness of payment, that's really just a nice feature. Matter of fact, um, because they sent one of the clients sent me the uh, bid from the other people. I, I they have some crazy looks like a word template with a bunch of crap in it. I'm like, wow. It's an Excel template. Which, no, no, not that guy. Oh. His is an Excel template that's ugly and fill it out, save it, attach it, send it back. Like that. Yeah, his is a different one. So we yeah. actually more than one person. But they're all at least. doing the same thing. Yeah. But it's also a comparison. The other one, you didn't see it. I can show it to you afterwards. Okay. Um, we got sent a quote and we're doing some kind of bid. They, they already don't like the other company. So. Oh, okay. That one. And they sent us what they the I still didn't see it, but I, I know. I, I did that video on structured cabling, and I am talked about how clear, concise, and easy to manipulate ours are. And it's just looking at what that other company did, I'm confused. I know cabling, and I looked <laughs> at it, and there's just things I'm not clear. Like, did they include the patch cables or not? They say part of it that is an optional add-on. But it looks like they included it in another line item, but I don't know. And they have just... Uh, it's a Word document, it looks like. It's really it's, strange. Like, this is the one that didn't also talk to the GC. This is also the one that didn't talk to the GC. Yeah, so. got a huge down payment, and the contractors are there getting ready to put up drywall, and they haven't seen the guys. Yeah, so that happens quite a bit. <sighs> that happens a lot more than I wish it would. Yeah, 
So right away, they're, they're one of their concerns, and I will go ahead and even though we don't officially have any of the bids from them, I coached them a little bit of what to ask the other cabling company that's going to do it. We're, we, it sounds like we got the bid for doing all the uh, technical uh, stuff, technical infrastructure, because this company didn't want to do it, which is weird. I, I don't understand. They didn't want to do it. Yeah. They just pull wire. They just they're well, just wire guys. Well, well, well and I assume they were just wiring people until I seen who they were, and I'm like, their entire website's like, manage services and blah blah blah. We do IT infrastructure and build your network for you. Maybe they outsource it. Maybe they outsource it. Maybe they didn't want to get caught. I don't know. It drives me nuts. How many people have websites that don't that are not about what they do? Or yeah, yeah. That's a whole different. That's a whole yeah. other rabbit hole. <laughs> I go to some of these people's sites that I see, and I'm just like, oh, man. What burns me, too, are the people, I'm going to sell the product that makes me the most money, not the one that's best for the client. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yes. We've been dealing with a lot of that yeah. lately. That's been, and it's kind of awkward. <laughs> uh, maybe they're watching a channel right now, and I won't name their name, but another uh, company wanted, they sold them the product, and this is from the company that makes well, we're them. actually a couple people deep um yeah one company who sold them the product who's a partner with the company who makes the product and then they sold but this client the product understand how the product works it seems well now like. the no the company who made the product completely oh, understands the company it. that made it knows but the partner doesn't yeah the partner kind of sold it in a way that works but also is overkill um, if you've ever read a Cisco book, you know, you need two Cisco switches interconnected for potential failover. You know, you can't use any other switch or anything cheaper alternative. And this is kind of what they did was they sold all these extra things that weren't absolutely necessary, but would work if you had them. And then another, another company, it looks like started the setup for these cause they wanted to deploy them at two sites. So company three, <laughs> put up a handful of them, but loaded the wrong software to set them up and ended up just setting up all the devices one off. Ah, uh, it's a mess. And this is, all, it doesn't make sense um, how they sold them all this stuff. Like there's not yeah. a lot of planning and this is where people contract us. Now the weirdest part is they couldn't completely support what they sold them. So they're flipping it over to us. But our, I even right away replied. I was like, you, you know, well, we don't, I don't usually recommend your hardware. I, yeah, yeah. It's not horrible, but it's just not quite as up to par with, say, Unify stuff. Yeah, it's like Unify's central management and their simple way of doing things is the reason we're a big fan of a lot of the Unify equipment. It, and and I don't mind any of the. Um, like the Meraki and things like that. I don't think they make a bad product. It's just they make a substantially more expensive with the yeah. licensing fees. As these people are going, yeah, I don't really want to be holding, be beholden to a company that if I don't pay their fees, and that's they that, turn it all off. That's what the owner of these devices was worried about. Was I want a device that I can control without paying a monthly fee? So they sold them these. So this other company sold them all of these units at a good markup. And like I said, with a bunch of extra stuff that wasn't super necessary. But, and that's a large part of why we like the Unify stuff so much too, is it's easy to manage and we can hand it over to the client. If the client says, you know, I would like to try to set this up and manage it myself, is that something I can do? Sure, you know, we can show you real quick. Here's the controller, here's how you manage it, and they'll, okay, here you go. It's your network, do what you want with it. You paid for all of this. Yeah, so it's just, er. Um, have, someone asked, we tried the new Unify cow cookie. We haven't tried the new one yet. Uh, I, there's a new one? Yeah, there's, I know. Yeah, it's, uh, I just learned about the new one. Yeah. There, the Unify cloud key is pretty cool. Uh, we hardly use them because mostly we're managing things or we install it on a server they have on prem. We do have a client that we just quoted a cloud key for. Um, so I think I don't, I so don't we may play with it soon. Yeah. But not, well, not the, it's the old one because the other one's in beta still, I think. Oh, okay. I don't know. We'll see. So we'll get that. They're, yeah, they're... Um, it's easier for end users who don't have, like, like we have the server set up that we can configure the devices right. and they phone back to us. But I, I've seen, we did have one person who actually, they had about four cloud keys and they all tie them into the same UBNT account. And I thought that was really cool because you can go right to... Uh, you know, ubiquity site, log in, 
And then, oh, there's his four cloud keys. Let me access that location. And then it loads another page, and there's my there's the controller. Yeah. So the um, most, so many of our clients that usually have at least one server in their building, so yeah. we load it on there. If not, oh, we uh, don't have a lot of clients with multiple locations. No. Because if, this guy had about five locations, so it made perfect sense for him. Yeah, so it's kind of a use case, you know. It's not yeah. like we drop one in all the time. We generally tie him to our controller because it's easier because yep. we're the ones managing them as a client anyways. It's all part of what we're already doing with the client, so why not have it on our controller? Makes it very centralized for when we get a login and they go, hey, can you change something? No problem. We just pull hit yep. him on a pull down, one dashboard. We don't have to go try and log into their account directly. Uh, much older question that scrolled by. Uh, have you actually played with OpenSense? I know you know of it. Have you I have, used it? It's been on my to-do list to play with it. I want to, um, but yeah. Also, how do you load balance multiple 2DSL connections to PFSense? I've done a video on this. My dual WAN PFSense video, you just set the tiers to be the same, which I may have done an accident. Someone said, even though I say set tier one, tier two, in the video I left a screenshot of setting them both at the same tier. Oh, well, that's your but, problem. People will follow those pictures but, to the teeth yeah. you learned. Yep. But, but, yep. but, and this is even the, competing company. This is the problem is do you load balance? No problem. Uh, but you cannot aggregate t together. That's where I've gotten in. I, that's a frequent request that I have to deny for people is I can't, they want me, they got two cable modems or two providers and they want to aggregate the bandwidth together. And I'm like, no, so no, no, they no want that's bond not them, how it works. Yeah, you but can't. from two different ISPs even. Right. Right. Because, because you, from the same ISP? N no and yes. You could bond from the same ISP, but that's not done at the IP level. So the ISP has to provide dual connections to you that at a transport layer, Have aggregate together. Yeah. Right. So it's actually doing done at the transport layer. It's just it's it's lag at that point. So link aggregation. So you can't right. make more speed. You can't go this and this because if you have two different IP addresses, you simply break the routing because when you send out something over NAT, it has to come back through the same path. Now what you can do is selective routing where you can push certain network traffic over one network and another network traffic over another with a routing rule where you can say goes out this WAN if it matches these rules and goes out this WAN if it matches these rules. Um, and then you can set a default route for it to go out. So you can, so to speak, d divvy up your bandwidth. Like traffic shaping over two IPs, yeah. over yeah. two well, that ISPs. Be, was traffic steering at that yeah. point. So yes, that is something that can be done. It, it will do based on parameters you said, if you set the two WAN connections to the same tier level, then you decide, and even if you don't have them at the same tier level, you can actually set a threshold for when the latency hits a certain threshold to start pushing all the new data to the next one. So there's different, there's different algorithms you have in there that you can set in different parameters uh, when you're doing it. And it really, it's not hard to tweak. You take the video I have for how to set the dual WAN, tweak that just a little bit. You can just make some really minor changes to it because it's all in the same menu. Once you know where those menus are, it gets easy. Where those menus are, it's not easy. <laughs> that's, True. A, that's the whole part is knowing where to find that menu where you start configuring all Check that. under diagnostics. It's not under It's there. always under diagnostics. <laughs> Everything is under diagnostics. Mm -hmm. What was it you were looking for the other day? Um, the backup and export, which was under diagnostics, I just didn't see the menu. <laughs> Everything's under diagnostics. Not under system, where I kind of thought, you know... I want to back this system up. Yeah. I want to restart this system and do system-like functions. Obviously not under system. Nope, under <laughs> diagnostics, all those things. I'm trying to figure out what, yeah. What, what? Someone's saying Linus has a video. Is it on I bonding? I think it's for ITAL for, for bonding. Okay, yeah, he's got a, that video, yeah. Okay, that's what they're talking about. I mean, cool. We're all bonding right now. We're all bonding with you right now. <laughs> we're, we're aggregating the knowledge of uh, four people here, but he's being kind of quiet. Yeah. So we're trying to aggregate all the knowledge. <laughs> and there was um, a slightly older question too. What managed, or what not managed, antivirus do you recommend for clients? Uh, now I did see some business clients or regular clients. I, I think just a managed antivirus in general. Like I'm not sure. Now, do you mean um, just going around installing standalone antivirus, or are you looking for a managed one with a, a portal of some sort? Right. We manage everything through our SolarWinds platform with, with Bit Defender. Bit Defender. And if you're just talking like end basic end users, 
they should just be on Windows Defender because if not, a Windows update is going to take out their internet anyway. That's really that's so that's happened quite a bit to us uh, just because we we see this. Um, Windows 10 doesn't work quite so well with antiviruses anymore, so you find a lot of times uh, Windows did an update, broke networking because most antiviruses install that, you know, endpoint. So solution. then you get the phone call, my computer won't get online. What do you mean it won't get online? Does it see I'll any wireless connection? Yes. Yep. But when I connect, it says connected, but it says I can't, still can't get online. Okay. Yeah. So it. Between, we use SolarWinds as the front end for it with Bitdefender as the back end, so it makes it very smooth because someone's saying about the portal. Um, I don't know. There's probably some company out there offering a managed antivirus portal. Kyle knows all about the uh, SolarWinds portal. He's in it more than any of us. Yeah, Kyle lives in the SolarWinds portal. I like it's just, it. It's, it yeah. offers a lot of control. So He's took it over, and I just stopped. <laughs> It's going to be Eric. <laughs> That's the problem. Eric's doing it next. I know He's how doing, to do it. I'll yeah. pick it up. Quick. I just don't. And so, I, I bumble my way through it. I just go in there to pay the bill. I do know right where the bill payment is. Yeah. <laughs> we've used uh, we've used Viper um, for the longest time. It was a part of um, SolarWinds. And then they introduced Bitdefender. And they're both nice. I will say Bitdefender seems to work a little bit better. So They made a lot of improvements to Bitdefender. They have. Yeah, so it's it's gotten better. Like so we're really happy with the Solar Winds platform. A lot of people ask, "Well, what about this? Or what about this? Or what about this company? They charge me ten cents less per workstation." Yeah. Blah blah blah. <sighs> Again, ten point, cents here. Are you looking to make more money or do what's best for your customer? Yeah, and at, at some point, I know the Solar Winds is not the cheapest one out there, but that crap works. That's yeah, why we use it. Their backup system. I haven't found a compelling reason to switch to another one. Kyle, and how much time do you spend on it each morning, clearing, all, checking all the errors and most making sure everything's the, in order? Yeah, most of the errors are just um, the antivirus definitions are out of date. And because can, somebody shut their computer off overnight. You can mass select all of them, tell them to run the update, and then you can rerun the checks real quick. I mean, it's maybe three or four minutes, and that's just waiting for the computer to run the checks and then phone home and tell me, oh, yeah, it's up to date. Um, I... If you're looking to manage them, I really can't suggest anything other than SolarWinds because it just works. Yeah. Yeah. And the the licensing for the Bitdefender is built into the SolarWinds pricing, too. So it's And it's, it's got a remote connection software built in. We've, we've free, had... You can log in and uh, remotely clean things up and run other tools if you have to. We've had Screen Connect sessions that have failed um, after Windows updates, and then we have to use that one to get in. Yeah. I need more water. Oh, I need water, too, since you're on a water you. run. <laughs> water ice. So, and this is one of those things. I'm the guy that actually pays the damn bill, and do I don't even ice. use the dashboard. No, I don't do ice. <laughs> I pay the bill, I look at the dashboard, and I'm still not uh, convinced. Of course, they're always calling me, too, to try to, I can save you this much. I'll even help migrate all your uh, clients over to our whatever XYZ RMM platform. And I'm like, when you get down to it, right now, as of, what the hell, August 2018, you really only find all the big guys are seem to be using either ConnectWise um, for the whole RMM platform or they're using um, SolarWinds. And the reason why is because they just, both of those companies right now have a really great platform. The other companies, a lot of them, and I'm not calling them out, but they do seem to mm -hmm. narrow on those really small, I'm just getting started in the MSP, dip my feet in there, and then I see a bunch of people complaining in the forums, oh man, I couldn't, I got too big and I couldn't handle it and they were aggravating and uh, I just didn't feel like the company, they've been promising me features for the last year and I never got and I'm just going to go ahead and pay the money for SolarWinds. <laughs> <laughs> well, the rack in the background is just for show, so. It might not be there. Oh yeah, I forgot that was mm -hmm. there. <laughs> it's really just to, to put things in. It's kind of storage, and uh, it looks cool. Yeah. Don't use Komodo. I'll, we'll just leave it at that. Maybe I'll rant about them sometime. Or AVG. Yeah. Don't use oh, AVG. Oh, God. Yeah. Somebody said something about Norton. Terrible. <laughs> Norton was one of the first. I'll give them that. It's yeah. there. Yeah. It's they there. exist. They got good marketing. Yeah. They got that, they <laughs> they got got that, that dodecahedron they got, thing. Yeah, <laughs> they got that router that looks like a space circle. The space circle, that's the right. space sphere router. The space like a sphere. D20. Yeah, it does kind of look like a D20. Roll a D20, man. <laughs> Just put numbers on it. Roll a router for connection success. <laughs> Failed. Um, the So, okay, this... 
I, I love yes. my Unify friends, and uh, we love deploying the Unify equipment. I will admit, this is a problem we've run into. Hmm. This comes to the PFSense VPN versus the Unify VPN. I like L2TP. Did I say it right this time? Yeah. So I said it right. L2TP VPN that's supported in Unify is nice. Two for two now. Yeah. <laughs> two for two. But, 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 when you're behind a NAT, one of the limitations of L2TP is if two people are behind the NAT, <laughs> it's going to have a problem. OpenVPN is highly popular because it yeah. cuts through multiple layers of NAT and gets rid of the problems created by L2TP. Unify only supports, at this moment, L2TP. They do kind of have support for OpenVPN, but you have to manually, uh, excuse me, you manually You do it from the command line. Yeah. Or it, it looks like it has support for OpenVPN via point-to-point. -point. Yes. But at that point, as of this you moment, can put a Unify on yes. both ends and point them at each other and they talk like magic. As of this yes. moment, if you have one employee on a laptop that you want a VPN into your network, get a PFSense. It's, there's a wizard. It creates an executable that you just run on the laptop yeah. and you're good. Yeah. yeah. L2 TT. Uh, damn it. <laughs> L2 TP ain't bad if you have people in different locations. So. But when they're on, when you have two, like if we had two people here and wanted, or two people at my house and we wanted to connect to here, this I'll connect and the second one will fail. But if if I'm at my house and want to connect and Kyle's at his house and wants to connect, then it works. Yeah. You can't have two people behind the same net. So that's one of the issues. Um, so I mentioned WireGuard. I know it may be on the roadmap. WireGuard may end up integrated in PFSense at one time. I don't know where they're at with that. It's WireGuard. It's another VPN software. Okay. Um, WireGuard's cool. I'm glad to see it out there. I've talked to people who play with it and said they have really positive results with it. Awesome. Uh, WireGuard seems interesting because uh, the Streisand, uh, let's talk Over. about this. I see what they're getting. Streisand could work in PFSense for OpenVPN. That gets a lot more complicated. Streisand, you don't roll Streisand on PFSense. That's a different um, setup. That's meant for independent. If you go look up our podcast, smlr.us, you can, uh, we have a whole two episodes we discuss the Streisand WireGuard PFSense VPN debate. We go, we get in depth on it too. <laughs> um, yeah, so PFSense for one employee for a remote laptop absolutely works it, great for it's that. It's probably the easiest to set up. I've I mean, I started really early here. Like, you want to do something in PFSense when I started learning it? Go set up the uh, VPN. It, it was easy. Yeah, add a user to... Like, day one, I set it up. Add a user, download executable, run executable, turn off UAC, run executable. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the stupid Windows stuff. So, yeah. Ov overall, really good experience with OpenVPN. Easy to deploy, many platforms supported, uh, even my phone. Uh, it's got OpenVPN on it, and it works really, really well. So, what? What? I was trying to see, I was trying to see what's under it. says, you're magic. What? <laughs> <laughs> I am magical. Uh, so, jumping to XCPNG, I have plans. For those of you wondering, I've got people who tag me in a post. I've been busy, so I haven't had time to play with my tech fun stuff. Uh, XCPNG, for those who know, is working towards a... Um, ZFS support, so that's I might just throwing out there other things that people are asking that I want to test. Also, uh, what is it? Uh, FreeNAS has U6 available, so the FreeNAS 11.1.U6 uh, is available. I do have loaded the U2 beta, that's out of two. The for that that box is still sitting just off camera here on my to do list to finish my testing on it um, with the new UI and things like that. Someone. Someone said, I tried Proxmox. For me, it was way too cluttered. I agree. I didn't like the UI for Proxmox. I didn't like some of the setup features of Proxmox. I, I played with it. I didn't give it more than about a half hour, an hour of my time of really testing with it. Maybe that's not enough time to learn it. I found XCPNG intuitive, simple, and easy, which is why I've created so many tutorials on it. But that comes back because to writing business plans. If it takes you that long to learn it, how long does it take you to write the documentation and then train everyone else on it? And what happens then if you lose somebody and versus XCPNG? I don't know, a couple minutes. So yeah, yeah based on what we've seen, other like, than, Proxmox has a lot of features on paper. So it, other than I had to message Kyle one time, how do I find all the servers on this thing? 
<laughs> he's like, <laughs> you gotta go up. Down. You gotta go up top, and where it says state running, remove that because it shows you only the running ones. That's why I thought I was on the right page and can't find them. Yeah. So outside of that, and I've done tutorials on the web interface, the XCP and G interface. I like it. It's not great. My someone someone asked me about uh, the roll your own version, the open source one. I've listed the link to roll it, but someone says they want a video on it. No problem. I'll Didn't we talk about them like a week or two ago? We did because Microtech. they sent us. Yeah. No, no, no. Microtech. Oh, Microtech. Them. Yeah. Somebody just asked. Yeah, it just uh, came up. Then it comes up so much. Why? I have no interest in using them. There's nothing compelling about their product line that. It's it's not priced substantially less than PF Sense. So it's a genuine NetGate hardware, so it's not priced better. It doesn't seem to have any features that PF Sense doesn't have, and it has, from anything I've read, a overly security complicated interface. Well. Yeah, the security issues. They've patched the security issues, but they still had them, mm -hmm. which is scary. Uh, great news news is they were on top of it, but when there's not a compelling reason, there's not a feature of a product that makes me want to switch to it, why do I? I wish I had time to test firewalls all day. If someone would just fund the, <laughs> my hours and say, Tom, test firewalls thoroughly. There's actually, I didn't know this a number of years ago, there was a consortium that used to do that and they couldn't find anyone to fund them. Yeah. And they said, they're all uh, some professional. One of the guys runs, uh, he's on the Twit network and that's what he was talking about years ago. They spent a lot of time testing firewalls, but it's detailed, it's extensive, it's a lot of work because you have to learn so many different interfaces and God knows there's no consistency between these companies of where they want to put things. So PF Sense puts it all in their diagnostics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so because there's not a good, it, it, there's a big training curve, even though we know all the network terminology, the training curve for figuring out how they do it, and like how SonicWall does it is stupid. We'll just throw that out there. There was some because <laughs> everything so for SonicWall in there. The, the problem with yeah. SonicWall is everything's object oriented so you have to go in, create the objects, and whereas PF Sense, I can, in one menu, let me create the NAT rule, and then it, uh, there's a checkbox. Do you want me to create that firewall rule for you too while you're at it? Yes, please. You have to create objects in SonicWall so that you can select it from drop downs because you can't just specify them on the fly. So I gotta go in, create an object, then from there, create a NAT rule, and then create a firewall rule. It's it's too many steps. And I do think it was Father Robert. Someone says under I think Father Robert's the one who was uh, who's on the show that was talking about the testing of firewalls. This is an extensive. It's a, it's an issue in our industry because there's so much debate about firewalls. And I would love, and I'm, maybe if I can, as I can build a channel. The problem is building a YouTube channel and getting funding for things kind of goes like this. If I was reviewing. You know, consumer products loved by the masses, like oh, like KBHD or some of those channels, who does an amazingly great job on it. You can easily get funded to review phones because it's got a mass audience. Who's that guy who takes a knife to the phones? Oh, Jerry Rig, everything's awesome. I love his. Yeah, I, that's that's my kind of review because how durable is this thing? But so, and this is just the the balance of numbers here. There's a far and fewer number of people that are going to purchase a NetGate firewall. There's a fewer decision makers. Yeah. So it's harder to get them to do it. It's also the firewall companies have no interest in it. They have only an interest in their salespeople contacting you to push their product line or their own salespeople pushing their product line because that's their incentive. They don't really want a big head-to-head -head comparison between all the firewalls because someone's going to lose. And, and it could not, be them. And it could be them. So they're not exactly going to be able to throw money in this pool. <laughs> so there's, yeah. So PF, that's one of the reasons I've gravitated for PF Sense. Why? Project is very, very stable. It's very predictable. It's very secure. They've had an excellent track record. Things I don't like about PF Sense, and I'm positive they're not going to listen to me because I'm certainly not the first person to say this. I would love a centralized, nicer management system for it. We love Unify for central management and MSP stuff. And I know some of the other firewall vendors, Meraki and them, they've done this too. They've got dashboards. Arrowhive has a dashboard. Um, so there's other companies working on dashboards, but you know the Unify guys have it really well. We've been deploying and loving their equipment. You know it hits the price point. We manage a controller, awesome. I wish we could do that with the NetGate systems because we here's a discussion. You know when we lock down firewalls and have them configured so only we can log into them based on our uh, office IP. What if our office IP? What if we want to change that? Well now we have to go back in and change a bunch of the firewalls so they don't have a mass management system to push a rule. Now granted. 
people seem to really get hung up on that and honestly we don't change firewall rules very often no. it's a pretty rare thing but it would be a nice thing to have to be able to dig into it. So that's kind of our reason for it. The other thing that's nice about PFSense, um, we just quoted him another client for this because it's just a Swiss army knife of tools built into the stack. I did my recent video on how to use Nmap to map a network. We had a question about a client network that has many segments and a big mess of things plugged in, but they do have PFSense. So I ran to Nmap right from the PFSense logged into it, Nmap, got my data, exported that file that Nmap created over to my local PC and made decisions and understood everything about it. I can't do that with a lot of other firewalls. I would have had to have another device inside their network. Well, that device inside their network, what if it was on a different segment? I'd have to get that device in each segment network. PFSense is what's segmenting the network. So I have visibility into every leg immediately with a whole host of, you know, free BSD command line tools at my disposal to get things figured out. This is one of the reasons it's such a great tool uh, for troubleshooting. I have an entire video just on troubleshooting with PFSense for that reason. So, yeah. Uh, do I have thoughts? Go, uh, oh, oh, yeah. sorry. What do we got up here? Uh, that one. Yep. Oh, someone gave me money. Yeah. Yep. Ten, us, wait, A? What's Ten. A? Yeah, I think that is. Is that Australian, Australian dollars? dollars? Are those is A Australian dollars? Thank we'll you. We'll buy some Foster. <laughs> we'll buy some Fosters with it? <laughs> I don't think they have Fosters in Australia. <laughs> I think it's just here. But it's Australian. Sonicwall doesn't like SIP. Yeah, I've seen a discussion on that recently about how much Sonicwall hates SIP. So, cool. um, well, we I've heard Sophos UTM is good. Someone asked about it. I, I, it, I've seen people say they like it. I've seen people say they like Untangle a lot too. I'm more likely to try Untangle in OpenSense, but they're both. I have them downloaded. I have them sitting on my drive. He has the best of intentions. I have the best of intentions every day of my life. So there's that. Um, currently working on a $10 million contract over here running Cat6. Sounds nice. Okay. Sounds nice. Throw some money my <laughs> way. Can you afford to throw me money since you have $10 million project? Just throwing out there. Uh, Zywall. Yeah, Zy I remember Zywall many years ago. Oh, we have a client with we one. We have one client with Zywall right now. Uh, the, it was recommended by their software company because they switched over to using a point-to-point -point VPN. To, so the software would just all phone back to their servers rather than having to run it on their own server and owning problems. And the company recommended a Zywall and gave you the full <laughs> settings on how to configure them. Like all just, here you go. Go buy this Zywall, put in these settings, and give us a call. Yeah. So um, I a couple other them. comments that people had that I will address. Do I think Beehive will be a viable VM system in FreeNAS? Me, I'm not holding my hopes up. I don't use it for anything. <laughs> So leave it at that. I've not been thrilled with it. Yeah, it's, it's the VM management system inside of uh, FreeNAS. I just like its name. It's got a cool name. Yeah. B E H Y V E. Uh, Fortinet, not Wait, bad. What? <laughs> yeah, it's less cool now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It so uh, Fortinet, heard they're good. I've seen them. We, I think we got. I've seen a couple of clients that had them. They worked. Nothing wrong with them. Kind of like Nothing really to say good or bad about them. Had no compelling reason to use them either. Uh, I don't not done a absolute in-depth comparison of 40 gate. Generally, I've always saw them as very expensive pieces of hardware. I think they've come down in price, but I've not remained competitive. Yeah, I haven't had once again. I wish I had time to review all the different random firewalls, but um, so much of what we really see uh, is just crap firewalls that we're replacing and putting PF sensors. So well, we put this Linksys router in. Yeah. Occasionally, though, somebody decides to replace their old aging sonic wall with a newer, just as awful sonic yeah. wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know that thing we're always complaining about? We're going to yeah. put the same thing back in. Yeah. So it, this is a bid we just gave, and I, I don't know if they're a little bit sticker shocked or not, but it's, it's going to be, it's a big building. It's a 95,000 square foot building. They have two, two gigabit Comcast routers broadcasting Wi-Fi on their own SSIDs, two more attached to each of these Comcasts, Nighthawk that they got from there. 
Oh. Wi-Fi doesn't work for crap in there. Yeah. It goes down. They have to reboot it. They have them zip, zip tied to the ceiling. And someone told them that was professional equipment. We let them know it's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're finally so fed up with it. Um, we're going to save them because they only need a single gigabit connection. Comcast's answer was to sell them at different ends of the building, different connections. Uh, we have that client who... He owns a long lot, and that's what Comcast did. Was so, are you going to put Comcast in that building and that building, or and then we came by? You know, you can put a unified point to point over there, and it'll go over there. Great, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, structure cabling. I don't know who else does structure cabling videos besides us and Fiber Ninja. I don't know any other people. He's got a cooler name though. Fiber Ninja does have a cooler yeah. name. Yeah. Pretty sweet name. You know, if I could just uh, if I could just get a camera strapped to Corey, we, he could just wander around and it would we be. We should get a GoPro. Well, he's gonna put a GoPro on Corey. <sighs> no. He pulls no. a lot <laughs> of cable. He does, but no. Yeah. You mean I don't know? I don't want to accidentally see Corey go to the bathroom because he forgot that the GoPro was on. <laughs> so I'm good. You don't have to do the editing. I yeah. guess you have to, <laughs> have to do the editing. So there's that. Oh, what was it? He had the one camera and couldn't figure out how to turn it off, so we got the whole truck ride home too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be fair, it was a really nondescript knockoff GoPro. Yeah. The button was in a weird spot. Uh, so. I do wear a tinfoil hat. Well, I mean, the Nighthawk has so many antennas, it has to work, it right? It does look pretty cool. It looks like a spaceship. It's got like eight antennas. Right. Anyways, back to your tinfoil hat. Someone says, you know, do you encrypt the hard drive on a um, on your FreeNAS or uh, PFSense? So PFSense does support full encryption. Uh, well, did you ask, actually, let me roll backwards. Which one did you ask about? Mm -hmm. uh, to secure password encryption? Oh, on FreeNAS. Oh. Oh, on FreeNAS, yes, yes, definitely do the password thing. Um, my FreeNAS box does require a password. I thought you asked for PFSense. You can do that. I don't think it's a good idea because every time you reboot your firewall, you got to type password in. I mean, oh, yeah. if you want to do that because you're worried about it, <laughs> guess what? If someone were to physically remove the firewall from my building, the VPN information would be very irrelevant. Mm, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're in the building, it can touch the firewall. The VPN information is really irrelevant. Yeah. So I don't bother there. But on my, um, when you reboot our PFs, uh, our FreeNAS, for all the BSD distros mixed up here, when you reboot our FreeNAS system, it does require a password for you to unlock the hard drives. Sorry for your inconvenience, but if you do choose to uh, remove my JBOD from the building and steal my system, you will not have access to it and you cannot reset the password because there's not a way to do that. Uh, I've talked about this before when you do drive encryption, it's wonderful drive encryption. It's also broken if you lose the password. There's not a recovery option for it at all. So yeah. Thoughts on Unraid? Why would I use Unraid? There's my thoughts. I don't have a reason to use it. Um, it doesn't do as much as uh, FreeNAS, so I can't find a compelling reason I should use it. It's also not open source. I mean, they don't make a bad product. They have some cool pass-through options, that, so you can do that. But I don't. It's not ZFS, and if it's not ZFS, why would I use it? Unless I'm wrong, does it? I think yeah. Someone says ButterFS. I think that's what it uses. It doesn't use ZFS. I like butter. I like butter, <laughs> but not on my file systems. <laughs> <laughs> FreeNAS, yes, no. It, you can back up FreeNAS to FreeNAS as a schedule. FreeNAS also has rsync, so you can back it up to things. So and stuff. And stuff. You could back it up to another FreeNAS. It also supports, because it supports ZFS syncing, so I don't know that what you're saying is true. Um, that's, yeah. We did have somebody ask um, what happened when you put the D and the V. They weren't here in the beginning, apparently. Oh, you, <laughs> you got put the you get data in the voice, and you get a bill. Yeah. You get a bill from us for driving all the way out to your office after you told us you didn't do it the way you we told you to do it. Oh, I did it your way, and it doesn't work. Okay, you come all the way out there, and away we go. So, <laughs> uh, access. Here's the problem: you're asking about access versus ubiquity cameras. 
two different animals altogether. Access makes some really cool, very high-end thousand-dollar cameras. Ubiquity cameras, well, they're almost going for a thousand dollars because of limited availability. Supply but and command. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like going, I'm looking at this Rolls Royce here, but what do you think of Tom's old Toyota? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I got access is uh, make some pretty good cameras. I we've got some clients using them. Uh, uh, they're actually phasing out. We see, they're well, dying well, off. Yeah, as they're dying off, they're not replacing them with the new access because they're just so expensive. That. Um, and they're really happy. Well, in this particular client, we're using Hikvision. So. Yep. Because if the government says I can't have it, I must need two of them. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who don't know, government banned Hikvision. So. <laughs> Uh, do you essentially collect logs? We do through our solar wind system. Uh, man, the, there's some different log management tools out there. Log management is very difficult to deal with. It's a whole other topic I yeah. won't drill into right now. Uh, that person had mentioned the backups are for client computers to FreeNAS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to get software for that. Oh well, yeah, I mean, or I mean, you're, but what, you're you're free to back up the client's computer to a FreeNAS box. You just well, matter, what is matter of fact, what, do what we do. We I have a video on this. Use sync thing. Load sync yeah. thing on FreeNAS. Load sync thing on everything else. Configure document redirection in Windows. That also too. works. Uh, also yeah. works. So there's definitely it works. There's all sorts of options for that. Yeah, uh, sync thing is probably one of the easiest ones. It's completely cross-platform. I think it even supports Mac, but I know it supports Linux and Windows perfectly fine. Yeah, I can't remember if sync thing does Mac or not. But I can't remember if I've ever used it. Well, Kyle. I've used it, but I, after I reloaded my computer, I didn't care enough to reinstall it. <laughs> Does anyone else have the confusion from normal RAID to ZFS? I don't know. No. How many drives if I have a ZFS 2 can I lose? That's dual redundancy? I think so. Uh, before you lose data or safely? Yeah. There's a lot of guides <laughs> on this, by the way. <laughs> well, these are important questions. Yeah. If you have a ZFS 2, you can safely lose two drives. Does Windows 10 could be better with ZFS support for a boot drive? Windows 10 doesn't support ZFS. Windows Sync 10 should just be on an NVMe. Sync thing does Mac OS, yeah. there we go. And the core runs on everything. Who cares about Mac? Not us. <laughs> yeah, like I all looked it up three Mac users can run it. There may mm. be a person in here that running a Mac, I don't know. Probably. They have nice screens, so maybe you're watching YouTube on it. Yeah. So they have really pretty screens. Good they have great screens. They do. But the, uh, I don't know, sync thing, great solution, easy. We use it. Matter of fact, that's how I synchronize all my videos because it's super convenient because it has revisioning built into it. So uh, I've talked about my workflow and my data flow a couple of videos ago, but to give you guys a brief overview, I create videos on my computer and as I'm doing all the incremental work on the video, because sometimes I record a few of them now and a few of them later, like for the project videos, I am taking and sync things automatically synchronizing all that data to my free NAS in the back as I create it. So I always have a constant backup and I keep two weeks of revisions. So if I delete a video at accident and I need it, I can go backwards up to two weeks on there. So what? Am I making make your face or something? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. Guys, you're all distracting me. Message retracted. I need to know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Redacted. Whatever. Uh, I can't tomato, read it. Tomato. Okay. I think we're going to wind this down. It's 7.30. We should probably go. Wait, to... what? I know. Yeah, it was seven a while ago. This 480 I bet video, at math. This 480 video must look awesome on your Mac. Oh, I, uh, <laughs> I looked at my phone earlier and saw uh, 1907 and said, I, I don't know how I came up with five. You can, yeah, you can really dig into, and it's not RAID 5 because ZFS does not do the parity the same as your RAID 5 does traditionally. So That's why it's ZFS. Um, here's the thing. Michael Lucas, he's been on here. He didn't just write the book on ZFS, he wrote two. There are two volumes and of books. some other books. He wrote some other books, too. <laughs> Savage by System D. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so because of that, there is a lot of information out there. Those books yeah. are very uh, in-depth and concise. There's, uh, if you search for a couple of, like ZFS raid performance, you'll come across a guy who has a website that goes deep into Wow, 
performance, testing hard drives, configurations, best configuration of setting up all your VDEVs with piles of hard drives. This guy's had some time on his hands and he thoroughly speed tested. He took large pools of drives, mm -hmm. grouped them into separate ZFS VDEVs. So because you, you can do this with ZFS, I can create a ZFS one here and a ZFS one here. So four drives here, four drives here, and then tie the VDEVs together for different performance options. He breaks down every performance option in there. I, I, do, I think I have a ZFS performance video where I just read from the guy's blog for big sections of it because it's damn good. And uh, so, he also breaks down in that same other links how all the different ZFS parodies work. The, the guy is clearly quite knowledgeable on the topic. I could take a ZFS1 and a ZFS1 and then mirror to those two ZFS1s. Yeah. That's basically RAID 10 right there. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that would be because of the way the parody works with a ZFS1, that would be like RAID 15. Yeah. So there's, and it's kind of cool, there's ZFS actually has a lot of ways you can do that. Um, you can also add in caching drives. So you have different types of caching drives you can add. You can also add a uh, ZIL, zero intention log. Yeah, zero intention log. So there's another option in there. And I, that's one of the things I actually plan on covering. I have some SSD set up and I was gonna show how you swap them as a ZIL, swap them as that, so. Um, UTM solutions for clients. We focused on the endpoint. I've said that before. How about a rebuild my ZFS pool? That'd be a good idea. Do you have a uh, search term? ZFS performance review. Look for my video on it. If my video actually links there. <laughs> Say two or three drives at a time and spend that money. Oh yeah. Well, yes. So the problem with ZFS, as someone pointed out, the hidden cost of ZFS, as I've heard people say, no, you can't just buy a drive a drive this week, a drive next week, and another drive two weeks from now. You have to rebuild the array each time. Sorry. But you can save a bunch of money and just buy one of those Netgear NAS boxes that hold six drives. Yeah. I accidentally learned that will add a drive. As you put the drive in. Without taking it down. <laughs> I put a drive in. It asked me, do you want to add this for storage or uh, redundancy? I click storage and it just started going on its own and I'm like, oh, that's bad. And I asked everyone, I go, can you still access the network drive? And they go, yeah. I go, so it's doing this in real time and working. Yeah. Um, I Someone said, it, so uh, that's downside of ZFS. That's, yeah, I know there's, in the year 2020, there's a ZFS expansion is supposed to be released, so you can actually expand ZFS. There's still going to be limitations on it. Michael, Michael Lucas addressed that, that it's, it's not all sunshine and roses. There's still going to be limitations to the way that implements. Um, it's really hard because of the way ZFS works. All those fun advantages you get with ZFS is why it's also hard to just drop a drive and add the pool and yeah. make it bigger. So, uh, what do we do to customize Invoice Ninja? Not much at all. It still says Invoice Ninja in yeah. a lot of areas. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't like. We're not like, big we didn't on label the... it, so it actually just says invoice ninja because it's yeah, like, we see. We... A, I mean, we see a lot of people who go into detail with that. Like, we've seen a lot of other people now who use Screen Connect and they edit all the little yeah. icons. Pretty much the only they... thing we did was we added our logo to the invoices and stuff. Uh, yeah, quotes, and that's it. it. We're the ones who see the back end, so it's kind of yeah. We haven't. Why spend met... the time on it? Yeah, like we Matter got fact, invoices to write and I, work to do. I post on GitHub uh, mm -hmm. suggestions and changes, and they make them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, actually, we don't customize Invoice Ninja because we don't customize can... it for us. We customize it for, for you, all of you, <laughs> all of you. So the user management feature, I actually have to do an updated review on it because they have an entire user management features, delegated permissions. They have all these things, and this is uh, me posting on. Excuse me, me post talking to the developer personally, and then me then properly posting it on GitHub and other people chiming in as well. So there's been a whole lot of things on there. Uh, do, 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 do. Somebody else I'm glad you like iDrive. <laughs> Someone likes iDrive? Yeah. I, I tell people all the time, we get clients who... It has a great price I right just had now, a client so I was talking to the other day, price. and she ha they had to make the decision on what server do they back up? The run, the one that runs the important software, or hers that has the QuickBooks file? And I go, is that all? Is that the only thing important on yours? She goes, yeah, just QuickBooks. I go, that's small enough that you could fit that on the free version of iDrive, and then pay the money to back up your custom software server for your business. Yeah. So, 
Anyways, uh, back to the invoice ninja. Someone says, what are our wave apps? Never heard of wave apps. We've been, I, I actually looked them up because somebody earlier said that they used them for their accounting when you were talking about, well, was it K-Money or whatever you is use? It, yeah. Is it free or open source? I no. Don't it's know. It's clouding. Pricing, yeah, so probably not. Do yeah, we want our financials in the cloud? I, You know, here's the thing. My, the government has my financials anyways, and I don't really... And they're more likely to lose them than you are. I am yeah. very likely. So, <laughs> Looking uh, at you, Equifax. Yeah. My financials are not for public disclosure, but there's also not... Other than the attack vector that could come with releasing financials, for example, if you had all of my uh, Amazon information but not my login, you may be able to use it as an edge attack to say, hey, I have uh, this transaction number here and this transaction number here and lead Amazon to believe that you were in my account and had control over it to get them to reset a password. So that's one of the reasons we do hide some of that. And that, we're already seeing a lot of that from the, yeah. again, the Equifax breach a while back. We're seeing creditors now just make up fake debts and send them in. Like, oh, yeah, we see this person did this years ago and had it on their credit report. Let's just file it again. Yeah. So we really like the way Invoice Ninja, it's all web-based, which web-based is nice because, one, no mm -hmm. application on a computer. Whenever I need to update it, I update it. I'm at the client. I VPN in to things and just can invoice right from the client because I have internet while I'm doing stuff. So, hey, okay, hey, I'm going to send you your bill right now. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so I, there's all kinds of niceties of it. Invoice Ninja also has a free version. So I know you said you mm -hmm. have Wave App, the free version. Invoice Ninja has one too, and it's up to 100 clients you can have? Uh, it's less than that. It's like it? 10 or 20. Oh. It's got some limitations, but whatever. It's free to get started. What's and it cost they, to have Invoice, invoice Ninja? Invoice Ninja is so inexpensive. Like, it is not an expensive product if you do pay for them to host it, and it's open source, so if you choose to host it yourself, that's free. Provided you know how to set up a server and secure it, don't just load it because you want to save a couple dollars and get pwned. <laughs> because that's, if you don't know how to set up server and all of that stuff. Raid is not a backup. Yes, can we all say that together? Raid is not a backup. <laughs> well, I mean... We've told so many people that... As like, last it's a backup if you're keeping an eye on it and you have reports for it. It's not a backup if the building burns down. Yeah, but neither is a storage drive that they're going to copy to once hooked every up two to their months. laptop. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why you get an automated off-site backup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like iDrive. Go to our website. Exactly. We have links for iDrive on our website. Yeah. <laughs> Raid, Raid is about the, it's the equivalent of copying it to a drive you leave at the building. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. actually, I'd say it's better because most people forget to copy to those drives or drop them. Yeah, we're gonna wander off here because I guess we gotta go do things. I don't know. I don't. No. Yeah, it's quarter to eight. Yeah. Quarter, it's quarter to eight. Holy crap! It's a late vlog Thursday. Yeah. I'm gonna go wow. play Conan. He's gonna go play Conan. I might play some too. And he might play. Yep. And Kyle's gonna play. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing pants now in the game, at least. Oh, that's, that's a start. That's yeah. <laughs> Thoughts yeah. on tape backup. Is, Don't use it. Is Why? Is that still a thing? <laughs> I can't tell if they're being honest or like serious. <laughs> no, some people still uh, yeah. Well, they have them. They bought all the tapes and they use them. Well, and they still sell some of them because they've gotten bigger. The new yeah. tapes are substantially bigger. So, yeah. You got time? Because <laughs> they're not fast. Yeah. they're Well, they've gotten a lot better. They make a 15 terabyte one now. Yeah, and okay. uh, so they've gotten they make some enterprise grade ones, and it comes down to they need an easy way. And uh, Mike, uh, someone I talked to at one of the BSD groups, they had tape backup because they had no other way. The cl fastest data pipe they can get was a uh, T1. We actually Ooh. we had somebody mention that earlier because I think they said they were from yeah uh, from Nigeria. Oh, it was it was them. Um, yeah. The internet connection is a pain, so recovery time is unrealistic to use something like online. Yes. Yeah. Right. So understandable. Yeah, and they needed uh... something to be able to do that. So take, there is times when you have very special circumstances where it's an issue. Um, it's less of an issue in developed America, but if you are in a... Developed America. In developed America. Which is not all of America. Not all of America. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem if you're in, like, South Korea or, you know... Yeah. Places with like gigabit everywhere. Yeah, you I actually like seen that Linus. Korea. Oddly, it popped up in my feed. Uh, Linus did release a backup video because he's uh, seeing if Google will ban him from doing this. It's a clever hack. Go, it's funny to watch. I know what he did there. Um, so yeah, 
he was able to get a big piece of his data. I didn't watch all of it, but he was able to use the Google Cloud to back up his data by, because Google has unlimited data. Okay. But you can only upload, There's a, they throttle you after 750 gigs. Okay. So what he did was, that's per user, it turns out, with the Google account. So they were able to back up a petabyte by just creating a whole bunch of random Google users and a Google suite. Oh my and then God. creating a part, dividing the backup between all those users. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's fully able to saturate. So it's kind of a stupid workaround. Um, and it saved them because he, uh, to back up his petabyte project, which I didn't dig into this. And I'm going to because I don't think, I, I'm not going to say he got the numbers wrong, but the numbers didn't sound right. Uh, he started calculating how much it was going to cost to hold a petabyte of data mm -hmm in Backblaze, I'm like, that sounds, or not Backblaze, AWS Glacier. But Backblaze and Glacier have a very similar price point. And I have some planned videos coming up on that topic to talk about how much storage costs are for the cloud because I'm gonna back up our uh, freelance to it mm -hmm. as part of a proof of concept. And it, actually, to do something like Linus is doing. If something happens to this building, all of my videos would go away, which are all on YouTube, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. But I just wanna know how much- They're already backed up to Google. They're already backed up to Google. <laughs> Yeah, oh, 750 gigs a day for six or seven users at 150 a month. So, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. So we'll have to we'll have to dig into that. I'm I am curious about that. Uh, Google still uses Google still use tape for backup. I don't believe that. I believe they redundantly take data across data centers. I mean, maybe I don't know. I don't work for Google, but I it would just seem logical to me. Um. I have, you have all my videos, download all of them, White Rose, back them up for me. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is my redundancy. Yeah. My, my friends on r slash data hoarders. <laughs> well, I mean, as That's long awesome. as your hard drive works just fine for moving data off site. If you have a hard drive that can store all the data and you dump it to it, mm -hmm. you could even, a, a same thing, get a little NAS box, put it in and cycle them out every week. Mm -hmm. um, our current for our critical infrastructure stuff is actually backed up to another location. So anything critical we actually do. My videos I don't have listed as my critical backup. Part of the problem is they're just too damn big. It's a lot of data for, I mean, they're nice to have, but they're yeah. not critical. I actually purged a bunch of them because I'm like, I'm not going to do anything with this. So what happens when you shoot a video is you end up with all the B-roll. And then when you're all done assembling all the videos, you, you have like, oh, here's four gigs of video. I needed 30 seconds of it. I only need a few megabytes of yeah. it, but it's one contiguous file. I left the camera up somewhere to record the uh, yeah. footage the entire time. Yeah, so it's just... It, it, yeah, it's just kind of those things like, okay, what do I do with all this? I've not used it in a year, so now I started, I have an auto perch, and I just look at stuff that's from a year old and go, <laughs> just don't need that. Yeah. I know. My, to... my cousin, on the other hand, she's a big YouTuber, and she has not done this. She just keeps buying more. Buying more storage. Yeah. Oh and uh, and if, you're, if you're Casey Neistat, do his studio tour. The guy has everything he's ever created including but they're like in floorboards aren't they uh, he's had to find creative ways to store it this guy has <laughs> i mean no backups of it sadly but he's got like the eight millimeter tapes because he's been recording video since the 80s and 90s so back when it was on tape he has all of them indexed for anything he ever recorded he can and he does he pulls them for some videos which i think is an amazing thing that he does yeah. but wow he's got a lot of stuff <laughs> <laughs> Yes, ZFS snapshots and synchronizing them over ZFS is amazing. Uh, it is even more efficient than rsync. So it is a great way to do it. So if you have a, uh, and I, this is, we actually, this is why, uh, what is that company called? Anyways, you can find them. There's a company that actually supports some of that. They support ZFS syncing. Uh, we've worked with a client and, on a data project where that's how they use, they're working on building an entire series of ZFS arrays and they have multiple sites and they're gonna sync all the sites by using ZFS uh, snapshotting because it's so efficient to get the, God, tons of data. Each one of their storage server, like when they quoted the first storage server, it's $80,000 for the first one. And they're going with all TrueNAS equipment. That's how we know them and that's what they were consulting with us about. So, anyways, I actually said I was going to leave, and I didn't, so now I'm going to leave because <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> we'll still hang out with you. Most important is written a tape at Google, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, you guys have nothing to do. You'll stay here all day, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you do. Well, someone says you will not. Uh, you run into problems with DBs that are not. How do you say that word? 
What? Q U I S E D. I know what it means. Q S T. Q S T. Q S T. Q S T. Yeah, it's the proper way you slice up the database on there. Will you try Unify Protect? I don't know what Unify Protect is. Uh, have you tried Work Folders of Windows versus Folder Redirection? It's their new direction, I think. It's no, it it seems a little bit different. I looked it up a little bit. Um, work Folders lets you save work files and folders on a personal computer, and it works with folder redirection. Um, it essentially allows your organization to control what files you're allowed to keep personally. Uh, neat. Yeah, it's kind of cool, and they can um, they can make it so that you have to have a lock screen password and possibly like uh, drive encryption. Um, but it, it's not a replacement to uh, folder redirection. Folder redirection just lets you change like your downloads, your documents, your desktop, uh, move it to another drive or another location. Yeah. So that's there. So all right, I think we've answered all the questions. We could, well, not all the questions. We, I could answer more, but I think I'm going to get stupid. So. <laughs> and we just figured out it's quies. 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 Wikipedia that? No, Mr. Jones. Quies. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Jones. Someone quies. says, well, according. According to a viewer, it's quies. Hey, that's the best response we've got yet, so we're going to go yeah. with quies. <laughs> but hard drive, uh, you go to Backblaze, Seagate fails the most. <laughs> don't, take, don't take it. Don't take it from me. Take it from the guys at Backblaze who have thousands of hard drives that they're they, testing. They put out. Is it semi-annual or is it quarterly? Quarterly. Quarterly. They put out quarterly reports because they use uh, just standard drives. They don't even always use enterprise drives. So they they document which model and everything just fails them the most. So. Yeah. Check out the Backblaze. I've done a video on it because um, I explain in depth a little bit about how Backblaze. Some people didn't understand Backblaze tests and someone said it was biased. I said it's not and this is how you have to look at the numbers. And I did some analysis on there and linked to the drives. So yeah, I actually I'll do, there should be an updated uh, Backblaze report re very recently released. So I got to look at this point. I've been so busy. I've not a video time. quarterly about it. I know I was <laughs> planning on it. Like I had the best of intentions. It can sit there with gotta, my downloaded ISO of... Uh, gotta get you a schedule. A schedule. I gotta get some free time. We're gonna make you do For stuff sure. so I have I can do more videos. Uh, plus, people want Eric to talk more. Plus, yeah, people want Eric to talk more. Guy on the left's <laughs> name is Eric. I'm gonna learn more so I have more to talk about. He's gonna learn some stuff. He's gonna do some learning. He's gonna do some learning. <laughs> He's new. Yeah. I'm, I'm usually more apt to know, like, consumer-grade stuff. I'm not really into... He's going to learn the enterprise stuff. Right. Yeah. He's right. going to learn how much easier it is in the consumer-grade stuff. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it actually is. That's the sad thing is what people are scared when about the enterprise. First, they think it's super expensive, and then they think it's there. I'm like, these Nighthawks cost more than Unify and work not as well. But they look so cool. They look cool. <laughs> they buy Seagates because that's what they can get in bulk. Is it, yeah. yes. Seagate, Seagate has a uh, quantity over quality uh, thing going on, so they can't uh, they can't source that many say Western Digitals all the time. Uh, they they use what they can get. Right. Yeah. All right. Bye. Hey, everybody. I will go <laughs> right away my motorcycle because it'll wake oh, me up. Oh, that seems safe. Yeah. That seems safe, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, gonna be out of jobs. You'll live. Soon. Ride my motorcycle, and then when I come home, sit at the computer. I have more stuff to do. Oh, HGST for the win. Yes. Western Digital's nice too. Well, they're the same company. They are now, yeah. <laughs> well, they're not. They are, but they aren't. And it's a different discussion. I'm gonna quit talking. They're owned by the same company, mm. which is Western Digital. Put this gaming in the name. <laughs> yeah, don't put your name. <laughs> <laughs> that means it must be better, right? Uh someone finally got our joke. All right, bye. Bye. Click, well, click the figure. button over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying.